Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW today, your new one-stop shop for all things AFLW as we dive into round three of action. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. As always, in not a jacket this week for once, it's Bryony Dawson. Just in a shirt today, guys. Just in a shirt. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Alex. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And over there, the diminutive fellow. It is the stats guy, Lee McCallion, who's back again. Let's go. The vibes are up and about. Everyone is very silly, but that's what we love on the show. A bit of fun. We are a little bit silly yeah. today. I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> I, I think I'm in that delirious state at the moment. It's, it's getting awesome. Shot. It's okay. <laughs> uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is AFL Today on YouTube, so you get both that as well as the AFL show, which is the men's show. Finals footy is ramping up there. You're going to Google us, AFLW Today Show. Everything comes up there. Yep. Of course, social media is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X is AFLW Today. On X, it's AFLW Today AU. Subscribe, star, do all the good stuff. Please give us a thumbs up. Get in the comments. Whose hair do you like? Do you like my mustache? Do you not like the stats guy? It's all good. <laughs> do you Pl- like my mustache? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plenty of interviews Zoom's coming in. your way in the next couple of weeks as well. We have an absolutely stacked calendar at the moment, so I can't wait. We better rip into the show because Forty's back. Forty's yeah, back. Let's go. <laughs> May as well start off on the bad stuff. So injuries. Oh. Who's got the injury report? Oh, jeez. There's always it's injuries. Been, it was yeah. It was another rough week round two. Um, there's a couple out of the Hawks. So Emily Bates, she was a late out um, for Last round week. two, but yeah, she's she's going through. Um, must go through training unscathed this week to be named, so we'll find that out soon. And, of course, um, Sheriff is out for the Hawks after having mm, surgery brutal. this week on a broken Yuck. fibula. The old fibs. Oh, it looked like, doesn't tell so lies. The same thing happened. Luke Parker <laughs> did it, like, I think, 2016. Yeah. It was gross. Yeah. Same thing. Gross. No good. Just just breaking bones in footy is just, yeah, like, horrific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a bit of a scar there. Snap the elbow in half. Oh. Snap the elbow in half. Yeah. Oh. Go, going for a mark. Yeah. Uh, a guy's floated across the back of the pack at the last second as I'm like going for the mark. Elbow to the back of the head. Oh. Knocked him out. Snapped my elbow in half. He got best on ground in the grand final three weeks later. I was in a sling and we lost by a goal. Oh, that's good. That's good. You fun. need to drink a bit more milk. Yeah. That yeah. Is. Well, let's get to the that contest is. a bit earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I was. He came late. <laughs> I'm joking. It wasn't great. So, yeah. Uh, okay. And Anya McDonough uh, yes. is going to have to pass uh, a fitness test yeah. to, to be ready for Sunday. Uh, Essen and Paige Scott is possibly going to return from a foot injury, which is exciting well, for the good. Bombers mm. if she can make it in. Um, Bonnie's pushing for an early return. Yeah, she really? is. Well, she, oh, she's not, always not this gonna, week, but in like three weeks. Yeah, because she did her MCL instead of her ACL. Um, yeah, it's whole Libby story. Birch has like pretty much set the golden standard of returning that's in right. four weeks. Oh, um, that's tough. But she's also a physio. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's a cheat code. or an osteo or something like that, and so she she definitely had the cheat code yeah. there. So Bonnie, <laughs> um, I heard Bonnie in an interview, and she was like, "I've definitely put it to the team that, mm. um, you know, that case running. study four weeks, like to get Is back. It possible if, if, if someone else? Has she's done doing it? stair runs. She was running stairs yeah. in the really? brace. Oh yeah, 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 I saw that. I was like. I wouldn't run stairs regardless, especially <laughs> in a knee brace. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, wow, she is too good. Mm. <laughs> and then one, one more is obviously Janelle Cuthbertson yeah, from Port Adelaide yeah. captain, which is oh horrific, brutal out for the season. Mm. Mm. All right, let's get into it because we have Thursday night footy. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we're about to hit midweek footy too. Just the festival of footy. I more can't footy wait. the better. I'm excited because we're able to watch. Everything. More games. Do you know what I mean? There's so still just, overlap, which yeah. different. That's all right. I, mean, but I can watch more games of footy, which yeah. you know what I like watching? Footy. footy. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, the Western Bulldogs take on the West Coast Eagles at Wits and Oval. This is 7 15 tonight. So by the time you're listening to it, turn on KO. Only place you can watch all of the AFLW. Western Bulldogs lead this 3 1. Probably safe to say it could be 3 2 at the end of tonight. Last many, the Dogs won by eight points. So, this is the grand opening of Witten Oval now after, yeah. you know, last How week. How good is that? It looks awesome. Yeah, it does, well, doesn't yeah. it? Need to get out there. Don't have time tonight, but I will try to get. I think the Swans play at Witten Oval later this year. So, I'll try and get to that because also, got to do a chip rating. Got to rate the facilities oh, yeah. and the hot chips. Out in the West, the hot chips are going to be good, mate. Yeah. I reckon yeah. they'll be good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, this game is very interesting for a number of reasons. One, the Dogs have kicked. One goal this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the first time in their nine seasons that they went goalless yeah. uh, last and week. So that's was, not that's not a good stat. There was definitely a few times they over yeah. their history that um, they looked like they were <laughs> going to go goalless. But yeah. yeah, last week was the first one. And to be uh, fair, it was, what was it? Zero six. They should have oh, they definitely kicked, kicked two one goals. or two. Yeah, some of them were pretty hard. But yeah, they. Oh, that's just a brutal stat. That one. So I I was thinking about what we can say 
about the dogs yep. uh, instead of, you know, just being like, oh, you know, what do you say? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the message messaging coming out of the dogs camp is shifting the focus from wins and losses, right? Because if you're not winning games. Oh, that's not a great start. I know. But it is but a fair point. It, it is a fair point, <laughs> yeah. right? If you're not winning games, how do you shift the team's focus yeah. out of wins and losses mm-hmm. and get them into where you can walk off the field saying, hey, we've got a couple of little pos- yep. positives here. So mm-hmm. their focus is on contest and pressure uh, as a team. And I think that that's, that's really um, – a really good thing to it's focus a positive on. Positive mindset. Yeah, and it's more controllable. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I'll say one more thing about the dogs is that nothing brings people together like being in the trenches. Yeah. And I it's think true. that, you know, these players that they're building, um, the bond that people form when times are tough mm-hmm. um, is a really, really solid foundation. So hopefully, yeah, in the future they can get some some solid key players back in the yeah. team. And then they but- even they just stay together, all their good players stay together because that's been yeah. a big thing that we've talked about as well. Yeah. Lots of players leave uh, leave the dogs, but yeah. they really wanted probably, yeah, those younger players that are coming through, they wanted to stay stay yeah. together for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. West Coast are no longer easy beats as we've learned in the yeah. first yeah, two games absolutely. of the season. So they'll be coming over here going, hey, Daisy back in Melbourne, we can do this. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll be pumped up knowing that they can potentially go two from three uh, to start their season. So I just think... Uh, the way that they sort of they dropped off a little bit last week, obviously first week bounce. Is there a potential for another bounce or was last week what we're going to expect out of them going forward? Yeah. Like, I think Ella Roberts is probably the key for the Eagles here. Yeah, agreed. They played well after the first quarter or so because the Bombers have had really good first quarters. And then, um, yeah, West Coast played all right. I, I don't think they were that bad at all. Uh, they're a really good pressure team I've written down here. They can hurt the dogs as well and the speed on the outside. So yeah. the dogs have been, haven't been too bad. Like when it was a bit scrappy against Port early on, you're like, oh, They've got, they can make a game of this, but when it goes on the outside, they cook the dogs. So. Oh, and they just don't have any structure when they roll forward. And then, uh, yeah, I wrote I wrote that <laughs> down as well. Issue. They're Correct. sort of a little bit beast of the honeypot at times where they're all going to the yeah. ball, and then it doesn't help when you're playing on the MCG where you're trying to kick long and then there's no one up there. Yeah. So, But this is the type of game that West Coast will really like, just using their speed on the outside, I think. And the, I think they also need to capitalise when they do – get into their forward 50 yeah. and they need their forwards to stand up like yep. your Kelly Gibson, Jess Hosking, like go and take your marks mm-hmm. um, and get in there. They only had 12 shots from 26 inside 50s last Whoa, week. So it's good, like yeah. 46% efficiency when they're in their forward 50. Mm. No good. Big question. Can the dog show us something? Oh, I really- Something w- is a very open- Yeah, that's a very- Look, they need to kick a, like, kick a few goals just to get the crowd up and about. I think they will because they'll. I think they'll lift early. Maybe the first half will be pretty close and then West Coast speed and just skill will take over in the second half. So I'm going to say they'll show us something in the first half. Just There's a big crowd I think is going to come down to Whitten Oval. Everyone's mm. excited. All the dog supporters. Like I know a lot of dogs fans uh, are going down there just because it's like, so oh, my God, new should. facilities. It's Whitten Oval. Yeah. Oval. It's, it's the Thursday home of the dogs. Thursday night footy. Thursday yeah. night footy. Exactly what else are you going to do? Just get down there. But... I don't think it's going to be further than the first half because they're just not skillful enough. <sighs> I tend Sadly to enough. agree. What, okay. do, what, do you, what do you got? What's your tip? What's my tip? Uh, I'm going Eagles by 15, and the more I talk about it, I'm almost tempted to put that above 20, but I'll stick Good with day, 15. Yeah, too. I put Eagles by three goals. Three goals? Yeah, yeah, okay. That seems about right. Eagles by 20. 20, yeah, all right. right. Friday night. This is this feels like a classic Channel 9 Friday night footy <laughs> matchup from back in the day. It does, yeah. Problem is it's a 505. Like I That's get right. I get it's a 505 because it's before the final between Port and Hawthorne and you don't want to cross contaminate with audiences. So it's, I get it. It's knock off. No one stays at work till five o'clock yeah, on a Friday. Just, yeah. So this is like knock off. Tins at on the, pub. the hill at Brighton Homes Arena <laughs> exactly. as Brisbane take on Collingwood. Lions lead this 4-1, but did it lose their last game to Collingwood by a goal? This is a big test for the Magpies after the capitulation last week against Hawthorne, after an okay performance without winning against Sydney, now coming up against one of the big three. Yeah. Capitulation. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a nice that was word. A, that was yeah. a big I've, one. I have some good words now. Yeah. Do you? I re- <laughs> yeah, what's that other one? I'm trying to make myself sound more photosynthesis. Oh, I can't even say it. <laughs> Damn it, photosynthesis. That's what I was trying to say. You know that? Oh, don't worry. How things grow. Yeah, how things grow. Yeah, that was, I was just trying to make a joke there, and I've absolutely uh, you've you've stuff, cooked stuffed it. that one. You've I've absolutely good. cooked that one. You just good one minute in time good. out. I'll just go out there. You don't have a feature in comedy. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not. Uh, what I wanted to say was about the pies. They didn't look too yeah, good last week, but they only had one player on their list not play so mm. that was available so oh, yeah, everyone on their list was injured up. they yeah. i like, felt bad for the uh, i can't remember who it was but the player that didn't play because you're like oh that's a bit unlucky because <laughs> you're the only one on the whole list that person. hasn't got a game because everyone else is injured they've got so many injuries at the moment and 
when they have a full strength team, you go, they're not too bad, probably pushing for finals. But Atkinson at the moment, is a test to be back as is Charlotte Taylor. Yeah, there you go. So if they get some players back, they can be a little bit more competitive, but just so many injuries at the moment for the Pies. We have a look at Collingwood's injury list. It's all long term as like Butler, three to four weeks, Imogen Evans, six weeks, uh, Howe with ACL that season, Michaela Hyde, six to eight weeks, and Tani White suspended, as well as Annie Lee's knee for the season. So these aren't just one or two weeks. This yeah. is long termers. Yeah. Not good in a, small, in a shorter season. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely cooked. And you'd be throwing your hands up in the air. You know, being like, you know, what do you do with the team? Because I feel like the Pies are usually a team where when they play the lower teams, they can be a little bit yep. scrappy and they can play down to their level. But then at the same time, when they play the top teams, they, they can really lift because yeah, they have that. those they have those team uh, mm-hmm. those players. Um, I don't know if they have the the capacity to lift. Um, you know, against against um, Brisbane because. They they don't have their usual um, you know star players in so it'll yeah. be it'll be really interesting I think um, I think the Lions are just going to run run all over them they yeah. they need Sab to play really well um, they they can get the ball out in clearances but then they've got not much on offer yeah well they did that field. against Sydney or well, the last two weeks they've gotten out in the clearances and then it's just come straight back out not yeah. enough forward pressure and things like that and then the Lions they look like they just reset last week they're like we're back and Dax kicks dip. three we're back yeah. they just had amazing pressure two way running everything that you want to see in like a, a premiership team just yeah. looked back last yeah. week I and think. Ali Anderson is is getting oh. record possessions 43 touches over under league. 33 and a half on Saturday I'm going 40 Friday, plus 40 mm. plus again why not two in a row yeah 40 plus yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah why let's not? do it <laughs> so we also saw this could this could be because also Casey Fields, Cranbourne is the most windy place in the history of the universe. Mm. Brighton Homes Arena, we saw Was it really windy the first game? Yeah. But we saw that they are gettable on rebound 50s, mm-hmm. the line. So mm. Collingwood, if they can get their hands, the footy in the hands of of, of Ruby or Benici, mm-hmm. there's a big chance of them to quickly move forward. And that's probably their best hope. That saying that, I don't see it. And if it's in the hands of Benitri, it's got a 36% chance of playing. It went up to 49. Oh. Went up to went 49. Up to 40, so, okay. so, oh, that's not too bad. So <laughs> Brit's, a, Brit's a chance of getting it to 60 this week. If we're going incremental increase. In a she went up, to be 100. She went 13 oh, yeah. last week. So if she goes up another 13 this week, it'll be 62. All right, great. So that's I great. have faith. If you get your hands on the footy that, that, many, that amount of times, it's not a bad thing. Collingwood conceding 61 and a half points on average so far as the stats guy right down. Yeah. It is a concern. Yeah, that is a little bit like, of a concern. Like, yeah, <laughs> their offense, we're already talking about inside 50 as a way. Yes. But the, the defense, like, There's, they're pretty good at attacking out of defense, but yep. they just need to defend first. That's, yep. that's the worry. Yeah. Yep. Answer the big question. Does a loss spell an end to Collingwood's already slim finals hopes? <sighs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they have a, have a chance. Fork, done. Yeah. Cooked. Oh, fork done. Put cooked. A, put a yeah. fork in them. Um, <laughs> fork done. That was, done. Fork done. That was a very short <laughs> just <laughs> Like Collingwood's final. Oh, so Brisbane by five goals. Oh, I'll go, yeah, Lions by, I think, what did I put? 28. Lions by 36. Oh, that. Smashing. Saturday, we head to Coffs Harbour for some reason, as my beloved Sydney Swans take on Richmond at 12.35 at the Coffs Harbour International Stadium. Yes, it is called the Coffs Harbour International Stadium. That sounds Stadium. very unnecessary to put international Steve, in I there. I think Steve Smith slapped 100 there in the 2021 day. There you go. So anyway, Swans <laughs> looking to bounce back after what was a disappointing performance last week. Also, no Chloe Malloy in the team. Richmond, one, still haven't looked great. They'll be looking mm. for a lot from Brennan and Conti. Yep. Where do we go here? Because this is a this is fascinating. This one could really go either way. Yeah. Because if Katie Brennan decides to go, I'm the best forward in the game. Well, she doesn't kick. Oh no, she's kicked one. She one. Yeah. one in the first game. That just goes. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Could be game over. Yeah, she dished off a couple. Yeah, that's true. Last she week. played well last week. Team yeah. player. Yeah. Yep. Team that's player. That's all you need. That's, that's all you need. Um. Yeah. It's um. I think. <clears throat> for Sydney, especially with Malloy being out, Sydney just need their like bigger players to stand up, and they, and they have been a bit, but they haven't really been taking on the game as much yeah. as I want them to. Just when I say Ali Morford's been poor to start the season, I know I started I that. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that in your notes. I thought she was really good in round one. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely struggled a little bit in round two, but you know, have an off game, whatever. I think that. Like she looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Lee's looks fit and healthy. working off the rust as well. She was injured all preseason yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Montana Ham needs to set up, step up. Yes, Ali Morford as well. McAvoy, Lachlan, Gardner. Like these, these are your Star big players. time yeah. players. You've got, you've got a 
It's like a handful. You got a yeah. handful. Yeah, because people go, oh, no Malloy, but then you just named all those it's gun players the, that would be guns on any team. Yeah, these players are amazing. Mm. So you know, they just really need to sort of um, string it together. Their game plan is really good. They look really good coming off defensive fifty. You know, yep. everyone's playing that that running game. They're moving the ball well. They've got those uh, basic skills. They're able to take marks, set up behind the play, all that kind of stuff. So, I think that. Their game plan and their skill is is stronger than Richmond's. Ooh. I'm waiting for Tanya Kennedy to absolutely tag Mon Conti out of this game. I Ooh. like that you wrote this down. Yeah, I wrote that down because I feel because I sort of, yeah. she went into the midfield last week, yep. Kennedy, yep. in the people I don't want to mess with list. Yeah. Kennedy, because every tackle so looks like tough. it hurt. Yep. So tough. Yeah. Like it's just like, would that hurt if I got tackled? Yes. Yeah. I just wrote this in because last week Mon got tagged, or yeah. even the first two weeks. Then the uh, the moment in round one that she didn't get tagged, dominated with about 12 touches yeah. in a corner. And then like, oh, maybe we should tag her again. And when she has gotten tagged this yeah. year, she couldn't have that big influence. Like Mon was still really good last week. But Kennedy but in terms can bring of a big, very physical impact to yeah. her around the contest, mm-hmm. which which knows? is frustrating for any anyone to come up against. So yeah. I think Kennedy would be really good. What's one of the main things you look in look for in a tagger besides besides shutting down a player? Are you looking I'm for looking them at, to shut down and bring well, something, or are you taking your own player uh, out of the game? I, to want, take I want I want that player yeah. when they get the chance to hurt them with the footy. <laughs> so if you get the chance to get the football and dish off. Like, you have a look, James Jordan did the job on Lockie Whitfield for the Swans last week, so I think it would be a similar sort of look. Yep. He had a fly, He had a shot from 50 that just nicked the post, but the last couple of times he played on Lockie Whitfield, he'd kick three goals. Mm. So he shuts down Lockie Whitfield but tries to make them accountable. Uh, yeah, you can still play your own. Defensively as well. Mm. Still play like, your tr- own game. Make sure that Conti is accountable for Kennedy going forward because when she gets the footy, she's very good with it. Mm. Mm. No, I agree with that. I think it's what you're saying. Conti will be like, oh, I usually don't have to play this defensive role. She might yeah. have to play defensive herself, even yeah, though she's getting yeah, tagged. Yeah. So it makes it a, a sort of a tough one. And yeah, good. It makes her second guess herself, I think. Mm. Great. So Richmond, they haven't – you're big on this. They've got the bits, but you're not happy with what's they just, going on. They're not putting it together. They've got no. all the bits of the jigsaw puzzle and they've been just – around with it yeah. for <laughs> like too long. Put yeah. it all together. Mm. You've got the talent there. Get it going because well, they have the they've got the potential. Absolutely, I think I wrote down here they should have uh, been West Coast. They just kicked inaccurately. Then they only let GWS in the game because of some inaccuracy mm-hmm. as well. If they just sort of straighten up, I think their plays are right. They've got a good backline. I wrote down with uh, Beth Lynch, Maddie Shevlin, yep. really good backline. Then yep. you go their midfield. You've got some guns in there. Then you got forward. You like experience as well. It's sort of got a bit of everything. Yeah, but you're still going. Oh, I don't know if they're a finals team because they're just not putting it together. So. Yeah. In this game, like especially with Moy out and the way saw the Swans have been gone, mm. I'm leaning towards Richmond, but I'm still not that confident yeah. at all like to tip them. Even yeah. though I, at the start of the season, I would have gone, oh, their team's good, but it's just a worry to, yeah, and to I, trust I'll, them. Yeah. I look at Sydney, they've got the same sort of superstars mm. and they're stringing it together yeah. more. Yeah. But, yeah, that's true. Answer the big question. Who is the match winner slash X Factor type player for the Swans now <laughs> that Chloe Malloy is out? Privatelli. Yeah. Got to get her hands on the footy more. Yeah, I agree with that. But even in round one, her she contested was, yeah, marks, she was all if she can get even two or three contested marks a game, yep. that's going to have two or three shots. Had seven goal. disposals last yeah. week. I but she's not going to be a high disposal game. player. I think it's even Needs if she has. to turn it to a 12 to 13 with two mm. goals and a goal assist. Yeah. There. yeah. But yeah, I think she can be that type of player. But they've got a lot of those players, as, yeah. as Bryony said. And then they do need Morpha to step up. Mm. Like, you know, she's such a dominating um, presence. It, yeah. If she doesn't step up, they're not going to get those clearances. Yep. You're not going to be able to deliver into the forward no. line. So. I want more Good from call. Montana Ham as well. Yeah, I, I, 100%. Wasn't, wasn't like, Swans fan at the end of the day, yes, but also looking at this objectively, wasn't massively impressed with her game. Again, Saturday, Sunday was a weird day. There was... Wind was going like this. Yeah, it was tough conditions. Wasn't working. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Swans win this by two goals in the end. Oh, I'm going the Tigers by ten points. I just think they've got a better You're team. Fine. They would have won if they kick. <laughs> fine. If they kick the first, uh, so if they kick straight the first two weeks, they would have had two wins. But they didn't kick straight the first game. So yeah. we're going Tigers. And you think they're going to kick straight in this game? I think eventually they've got really good, some good forwards that can kick straight. So it's going to kick, click eventually. So he is the stats guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just taking a punt on that, to be fair. Swans by six. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's head to Icon Park. Now, this is a classic 1980s yeah. matchup at, as we all knew it as back in the day, Optus Oval. Yes. Carlton take on Geelong. Great kit matchup coming too. Carlton lead this head-to-head two and one. The Blues won this game last year by 14 points. Mm. That was a big this shock. Is a, that one, yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Big game because obviously Carlton with the last-minute winner over the Suns last week, 
and Geelong snatching a draw against North Melbourne. Geelong need a win. Yeah, they do. And I think that they've got uh, they've got the talent to mm. do it. And they're in form. Uh, I know that it was a draw against North last week, but it, I did, definitely didn't expect them to take it to North Melbourne last they week. Should, they should have won. I watched that. Like as a North fan, North were hot. Geelong were just all over them yeah. the whole game. Just missed that. Uh, they dropped a few easy marks in the type forward fifty. They should have won that game. Yeah. And even before it started raining, I think I mentioned that during the week. That yeah, they just look like the better team. So I think they shocked North Melbourne of how good they are and how like up there they'll be this season. Yeah. yeah. I'm worried about with how Carlton they sometimes just have this like. Oh, we forget we're playing football <laughs> <laughs> and allowing multiple inside yeah. 50s. They've averaged nearly four. Few blips, yeah. Well, they've averaged close enough to 40 inside 50s against in the first two games. Oh, that's a lot. It's not great if you want to win games of footy. Mm. Yeah, they are a bit blippy, aren't they? Yeah, like, oh, what's, oh, oh. <laughs> but then they, yeah, were clutched in the last, uh, last couple yeah. of minutes last game and yeah. got the win. But, yeah, that I don't know if that was... Yeah, showing where Blues are or how bad Gold Coast are going. I'm sure you guys I don't know. talked about that. But that game really confused me. It was still. a very confusing mm-hmm. thing. But I did like how there was a few other people scoring goals from the Blues other than Darcy Vessio. I wrote yeah. that down. Just because in the past you go, oh, who's going to kick the goals other than Darcy Vessio? Not, not really many options. Yeah. At least they have a few more options down there. I wrote down here as well, the Blues are a lot taller. So yeah, last week it actually Moody's. worked. Uh, yeah. Geelong playing small ball. That's sort of like a, a, I don't know, basketball term or whatever you want to call it. But the Cats ha- had really undersized rucks. Like some of the North's midfielders were taller than the Cats' rucks, <laughs> which I was very – but it sort of worked because North are really tall. The, the Blues deck, are really yeah. tall. Hits the deck and they're sort of like O'Dowd for uh, the Giants. Actually yeah. plays a bit undersized uh, yeah. ruck. So I don't mind that uh, the Blues are going a little bit uh, yeah tall compared to the Cats. Well, you're in an unders. You've got um for, for Carlton. You've got uh, Shira and Abby Mackay. So Mackay. Mm. Yep. So – they get in and under. They get their hands on the footy first a lot as well. It's just dishing out and then using it going forward. But again, putting it to the Moody's to see if they can take that first grab if they're forward. So mm-hmm. very that's gonna interesting be tough game. to get the ball when McDonald has uh, the ball every two seconds. Well, every time I looked yeah, up in the gonna... North game, she had the ball. I was, it was so frustrating as a North fan. Oh, so yeah. playing very well. We've said it the first two games is we need to see more from Georgie Prasparkas, who's clearly carrying something. At yeah, the I think she's injured, right? Yeah. 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 She yeah. doesn't look like Quad. herself at all. Quad, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Because she keeps getting rubbed down to things. Yeah. Keeps getting the rub down. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, if, you, if you're if you not at 100%, you're always going to be a little bit, I don't know, like ginger, trepidatious mm. or something like that, going for the ball yeah. and playing fully fully hard and out. You can't so. fully explode out of packs like we've, we've seen. Like, she had one moment on the weekend where she sort of ducked and did like a – a twist to get out of a pack. And I was yeah. like, oh, she's back. And then yeah. it was like, that was that flash point. I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. So the big question, Carlton, uh, no, sorry, Carlton, are Geelong legit? I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. Like they're a, they're a lock for top four for me. Oh. Yeah. Because they should have beaten North. Like yeah. comfortably. I watched that game. They should have. Should have beaten Melbourne. Yeah. Prove it to me, Geelong. <laughs> prove it to me. I know they haven't. They need I, to win. I want them to prove it to me. Yeah. I, I'm not a believer at the moment. Fair enough. Yeah, I think they the can. I, I think they can run over um, Carlton. I think they can absolutely steamroll them. I'm saying Geelong by 25. Ooh, Geelong by three goals. Yeah, I'll go. I don't even know what I wrote. Danny, Geelong by 20. Yeah, yeah. just they'll get that do- job done comfortably. Let's head to Alberton Oval, 4:35 p.m. Port Adelaide take on the Fremantle Dockers. Yet to play each other. Mm. So first time both teams looking at each other. This game could be <clears throat> sneakily fun. Yeah. I think it would be a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, you got Port. I wrote down here, big improvers this season, and they're just not relying on Horton like yeah. they used to. Like you go, Gemma Horton has to have twenty in a goal or or fifteen and three goals for yeah. Port to win. Now they're like, oh, we've got so many other goal keys. You obviously had Tiku. Obviously, we all talked about that. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Amazing. Last week. Podcast, yeah. Even, this if, one. even if she can kick <laughs> one or two goals a week, you're like, oh, there's another option up forward, which yeah. is awesome. Kick four at the MCG. We're on. Board. Yeah, how good yeah. is that? <laughs> Could just retire after that. Yeah, yeah. I kick four at the MCG. Yeah. What have you done, yeah. Zach Butters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Freo need to bounce back. They were, I can't swear on this podcast as to how bad they were on the weekend. Not yeah. kicking a goal. Like I know it, was, it wasn't the best game, but my God, going forward, they were diabolical. I think even in your worst games, you've got to be able to kick a goal. Um, mm. And it was a different team to what we saw out at Windy Hill. Was. Where was the, the run? Before. Where was yeah. the dash? It yeah. disappeared in one week. I know yeah. Adelaide are good, but there was no take the game on. Yeah. And I, I don't know how things can go backwards and forwards um, in one week. I think they're too reliant on, on your tag. So obviously she's a gun. Week. I know it's only been two weeks, but 
every time they went to her, she was just so well covered by yeah. Adelaide. But yeah. they kept trying to go to her. At times she was have two players on her and so things is like this, that. Is this you need like, to go elsewhere. They yeah. need a bit of versatility. Is, is yeah. this the problem that we've had with a few teams? We're like, lower the ice, take the short option yeah. as well. Just at least keep banking territory going yeah. forward, which some teams just sometimes like, oh, got to get it forward at yeah. all costs. I think that's just like learning as a team as well. You know, you've got your game plan, but yep. you need, you've got those three contingencies in place and people need to know which Adjust. contingency you're going to True. if this happens or this happens. Um, and I think that's that's what a great team does. They know exactly if someone starts running out here, they know what what they're trying to set up and and that kind of stuff. And that's what stops everyone running for the ball at the same time and making sure there's, you know, their players forward. So yeah, I think Essendon as well, we talked about this in the first week, made Frio look better than they were. So that Frio got <laughs> it. That, which I, sorry, Essendon uh, fans out there. And, I'm uh, still sorry, Brian. the hot chips but there. The fact that Essendon... I think dropped like three or four marks where three got goals out the back. Yeah, three or four hundred. Yeah, three yeah. or four hundred marks exactly. And then those goals were out the back, so you go, oh, Freo kicked a massive score. But it, I think it was more Essendon's fault than uh, Freo being really good. So yeah, that, okay. yeah. Whereas they couldn't do that last week because Adelaide weren't going to drop those marks. We forgot mentioning uh, to mention Ash Saint as well. Mm. The Port, so they've got yes. plenty of options rolling forward. Yeah. Also, uh, no Cuthbertson. Yeah. Yeah. How, big how does that being hurt out. Port? I think it just r- rattles you a little bit. Mm. We saw it with Essendon. We saw it with um, Sydney as well. It, you can't help but be rattled when you, yeah, when you have, um, you know, you're captain out or you're, you know, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I think that they will say it's not affecting us, and we've got a team plan, and we're all about a team, and you know, but you know that that I think affects your mental preparation during the week and everything like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Throw Sinead Goody on the ball. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, I don't mind She's that. so good, isn't she? <laughs> Coming your way this Monday. Oh, Ooh, yeah, we've locked that in. That's Very right. nice. Yeah. That is so exciting. Stats guy, you're not on. Yeah, that's all right. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to just watch that one. <laughs> Answer that's the awesome. big question. Does the winner of this push for finals? Uh, if Frio win, no, but Port, <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Stats guy, like, so Does that make out. sense? Frio's that not make pushing sense? for finals. No, but I think Port can. Port, yeah. Because they've improved a lot, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they, they have really exciting moments as well. Mm. Like there's a real belief in there. So yeah, I'm I'm tipping power by eight points. Ooh. Power by three points. I'm gonna go a bit more. I've changed my mind. I'm going power by fifteen. I've just talked myself out of <laughs> Freo in general. So I'm going power by fifteen. A bit more than I thought. Let's move to Sunday. Oh, I can't wait for this game. Huge game of the round. At Thomas Farms Oval in Adelaide at 1.05 p.m. Yeah, that's what I where, said. Where's Thomas Farms? Oh, Thomas Farms why Oval. Isn't it, that sounds about, like Why isn't America it Norwood? Anyway, <sighs> as the Adelaide Crows take on the Hawthorne Hockballing Hawks yes. in... Oh, I can't wait for this game. It's going to be <laughs> sick. Actually, it looks pretty cool, this Oval, so okay. uh, I take it back. It looks it has a cool little grandstand... Where is it in conjunction to Adelaide as you're looking at the map? Oh, stats, I man. I don't know. I'm not looking at the map. kilometers away. Yeah, I don't uh, know where it is. All right, stats guy, roll us through some stats because Adelaide are dangerous when they roll forward. Oh, yeah, 11 marks inside 50 for Adelaide last week, which yeah. is just awesome yeah. in any any game. Uh, you got, I think, Marinos arguably the best two-way running midfielder. 19 tackles. Like, she's obviously going to get 30 disposals every week, but 19 yeah. tackles when they had most of the ball is just unbelievable. And I think, yeah, they've got... So many good small players that can even take marks inside 50. So some of those 11 uh, marks inside 50 were from the smaller players. Mm-hmm. So their forward line's awesome, their midfield's awesome, and then their defense, I, I can't even, I haven't even talked about that. They didn't even concede a goal last yeah. week. So they're just so good. They're, they're absolutely elite. They're going to be the team to beat this season again. Yeah. Um, all of the things that you just said. There we go. Um, the Hawks I'm really excited about. I think this yeah. is the big tester for them, right? We've seen them play some really good footy, some really exciting footy. Um, they do have a couple of injuries, right? So with Sheriff and um, Anya McDonough out um, and Batesy, if she's not in, they are going to not That's be brutal, at yeah. full full. What do you say? Strength. Tilt. Yeah. Strength. Full strength. That, there that we go. one. Yeah, yeah. Never um, go on tilt. Never go on tilt. <laughs> no, no, no tilt. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm really, really excited to see what Hawthorne can do up against arguably the strongest team in the competition and and how much they take it to them. Mm. This is gonna be great because it's like you've got this young, youthful, exuberant midfield, and then you've just got 
Anne Hatchard and Marinoff going, come on, kids. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, so you got Fleming. Come on, kids. What are you going to do? <laughs> I know. What are you going to do? You're going to try that? You're going to try that crap with us? Good luck. <laughs> no, they, Welcome think, to school. Yeah, <laughs> it might be, but I think they can take it up to them. you got Fleming, West, and Breed just yeah. like hitting that Would part of their prime Would you be young crew. and arrogant enough to get into their faces, into the crow's faces? I think they have to, yeah. Absolutely not. Oh, I think you have they to. Will, if you try to get in Anne Hatchard's <laughs> face, she'll be like, okay, buckle up. I'm going <laughs> to take you to the smack there. <laughs> and that's it. Like, that's true. You, Do it. This is the Hawthorne way. I think, yeah, the get men's and the face. women's, they're both just trying to be annoyed. I think it, it would work if they get under their skin a bit, but like you said, they could just stand there and go, it's it's huh. either, it's either, <laughs> look at these little turds and they belt them by 10 goals, <laughs> yeah. or it's like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. Mm. I love it. I'm excited to see um, Tilly Lucas Rod. You know, their their yes. their rebound off that defensive 50. We know they can move it with speed down the middle. Um, I think Adelaide they're going to um, aim to do is to really slow that down. They're going to play, try and play um, possession footy, um, but also running their own game as well. I think they're just going to try and disrupt um, what Hawthorne. How do you stop their, uh, Ebony Marinoff? How do you do it? What do you do? Well, we were just discussing this before the show. I don't think they can. I don't know if they have a right matchup for it, but there is a few well, ways, I guess. But what do you guys think? I don't think you can. You've just got to hope that she doesn't destroy you. No, you try and contain, but you can't. You can't stop someone as mm. good as her. I agree. No, you you absolutely can't stop her completely. And just with her strength and physicality, like still going to throw you around. Yeah. I reckon she's if she keeps playing like this, she's gonna be she's gonna be up there for she's probably, she's probably I, that was my pick at the start of the season. <laughs> she's she's on, the best player in the comp. She's yeah. on six votes already. Yeah, best yeah. and fairest. So yeah. um yeah, I think I think they'll definitely send someone to her to to tag and try and shut her down a little bit because she is when she gets it, she's deadly. Oh, with the so ball. damaging. So yeah. you know Hawthorne have just got to try and run them off their legs, I reckon. Yeah. Speed, speed, speed. Mm-hmm. Good I luck. Think, yeah. Good luck. Gilroy, Gilroy for a few goals as well. Yeah. She's been awesome. Yeah. She's a kick and goal from outside yeah. 50. That's just so good to watch. And I reckon she will really welcome the challenge mm. and she'll she'll step up there. Yep. Side note, Oval is just outside of Adelaide. It is Sturt's home ground. In the oh, SAF. yeah, Sturt. Okay. So good, good, go. good deck there. Uh, it's the big question. Are Hawthorne good enough to fight with the best of the best? Oh. I'm going to say yes, but they still lose. Adelaide by two. Goals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, what? Two points. Goals. Two goals. Oh, two goals. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. High scoring, entertaining, awesome game. Everything that you want to advertise about AFLW is this game. I'm really hoping that it's that, and I'm really hoping that uh, a team like Adelaide doesn't completely expose mm. the Hawks. That's what I'm hoping. Why yeah, yeah, the yeah. Universe? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not doing no, that. That's no. our job. That's Killing my that's, vibe. That's, <laughs> I, like, I'm loving Hawthorne. Yeah. I'm absolutely mm. loving Hawthorne at the moment. Um, I think they will be able to take it to them, but I think um, once that – once that second half starts, I think that's when the the crows will put it into second gear, and they're up by twenty one. Second gear, twenty one. Okay, so yeah, I'll go. Yeah, crows. I'll go crows by two goals as well. I think this is going to be about that, and Hawks will stay with them for three quarters. Let's go to Casey Fields on at the exact same time. Yes. Which just oh, it's another good game. Though. Why is it on at the same time? Mm, that's like, right. These two games clashing seems bad structuring, but we didn't know how fun Hawthorne were going to be six weeks ago. <laughs> That's true. Melbourne <laughs> Demons take on North Melbourne at Casey Fields. North lead the head-to-head 6-2, which is interesting given North's, uh, sorry, the D's success in the competition. Mm. North belted them by 41 points the last two times they played. In a final. Run away with it, Stats Guy. This is your team, the Kangas. Yeah, I'll talk about them first. Just huge, yeah, finals rematch. Libby Birch against their old side. A bit, of, bit of revenge. Alex revenge! Has- <laughs> Not that it is revenge, but I don't know. You could, Every you could, game is a revenge you game. You can make it revenge. I'm and I think she's really bolstered North's defense, and that yeah. would annoy Melbourne because they probably need a little bit of Libby Birch at the moment. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And like she was such an instrumental part mm. of that Melbourne team. And I was so surprised when she went to I was as North. Well, yeah. I was like, eh? Yeah. Because uh, she's, she's such a loyal person as well. So I think this will be, she'll be really excited to play. Mm. Yeah, so I'm also hoping that's not wet for North because as soon as it started raining on the weekend, I feel like the whole game plan just went out the window because mm-hmm. North have so many tools, but I think the weather's supposed to be all right. Dry deck bullies, hey, stats guy. Well, I don't want to say it just yet. It's only been one game in the wet, but it looked <laughs> like that on the weekend. I was a bit worried. Uh, I think North need to play that risky footy. It was sort of very safe, kick down the line against Geelong, whereas against the Lions, they were just trying to hit the inside kicks, go through the middle, just play attacking. And yeah, the Ds are just undersized. So if they can mm. use their tools, North, I think, yeah, they're going to get on top. Mm. I think this is a fascinating game because the D's is trying to prove to us they're still good. Yeah. North will be bristling after last oh, week. Hey, no one, no one wants to draw. Throwing that game yeah. away. Mm-hmm. No one wants to draw. 
I feel like this is where North Melbourne just sort of pull the socks up, you know, and just go. Like what Brisbane did after that. Yeah. 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 Bit of anger built up. And the D's just consistently go as a as a unit as a football club can we just get out of casey fields yeah it was a worry last yeah the d's didn't look good last they looked horrendous 30 inside 50s for the game and only two goals like uh, it was come a, on it wasn't the greatest of spectacles yeah but it also as a d's fan if you are one having watched them the week before with what they did to Geelong, you know what they're capable of yeah is it they they've been exposed by the conditions as well because mm. they went from gmhba stadium yeah stadium to the open air Casey Fields. Yeah. But I mean, they train down there. They train like, there, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's to do with that, but I think they rely a bit too much on Kate Hoare. Obviously, their star player. A lot of people are saying just play her permanently forward because you're going to get more goals, but she's been good you in the, get the midfield as well. So like, she can't <laughs> yeah. play everywhere. You put a half back as well. Yeah. I don't know, but. Yeah. Uh, Emma's just going to smash her if she comes down forward. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't right. want to mess. Again, in the, I don't want to get tackled by Emma. Yeah. A hundred percent. Fair enough. Having met a lovely person, but getting tackled by her would suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, do you reckon from last week that North, because there is a lot of talk about them, that North are feeling the pressure of like, you guys Ooh. are the best side, so you need to put these, these oh, people they away. They should be used to it by now because mm. I feel like the last three years, maybe not the best side, but people are going North are, should be right yeah, up North there. Yeah, North are up and about. I thought this year it'd be sort of, out of the back of their minds, whereas the recent years they're like, oh, North should win, North should win, North I think win. North are just going to control this game in the air because the Ds have yeah. no tools. Mm -hmm. That's it's, what that's what the uh, the big difference is, yeah, for sure. So the big question we already asked that are North a dry uh, slash good yeah. weather team, and I think it is yes at the moment. I'll, I'll say otherwise. no because it's only been one week, but it did look like that last week. Change I'll say yes, it did look like that. <laughs> yeah, just Change it did look tip. like that. North Melbourne, four goals. <laughs> four goals. Oh, This is wow. comprehensive. Okay, you're like you're a full sock puller upper. Yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> this is the mouth guards in. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, got you. Got yeah, you. to bring the mouth guards to training. <laughs> yeah. I've got North by 12. Oh, I'm going North by 15. Let's head across to Windy Hill primetime football as the Bomb Rays take on the surprisingly good, as we expected, St Kilda Saints. The Bombers beat the Saints last year by 12 points, but having a look at these two teams right now, it is a stark contrast now. Mm. This is your bomb race. It's it's been turned flipped upside down. Yeah. If yeah, I can yeah. quote um Fresh Prince. Prince. Yeah, Fresh Prince, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. I'd so, we like don't, to take a minute. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd like to take a minute to ask you what's going on at Essendon. And you oh. beat West Coast. <clears throat> yeah. This is another test. Yeah. We expected a lot from Essendon. I expected a lot. Yeah, well, I, I didn't. Uh, but, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't Shut even up, say that. Guy. <laughs> I, I think this is going to be a really big test for them yep. as well. Okay, you can beat West Coast. Great. You know, you, you beat you've West sort Coast of exposed a, a few of their flaws because we were excited about West Coast. But, I mean, like, who are you going to send to Jesse Wardlaw? Like, is, she's just going to run all over you. Mm. Um we and know, they definitely we, played better last week with that marking game, but I don't yeah. think it was enough. Maddie Gay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Maddie Gay was awesome. amazing. Awesome, seven with, yeah. yeah. But that's a it. million metres game. If you play Maddie on Jesse Wardlaw, but that takes away Maddie's, marking, yeah. Maddie's best weapon, which is that running off of defensively and taking intercept marks because you're not going to run off Jesse Wardlaw because if you yeah. drop that footy, uh-oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, there might be like a three-metre height discrepancy between those two also. True, yeah. The, <laughs> there isn't that yeah that big defender that from Wardlaw, is there? Yeah. That's, that's going to be a tough yeah. ask. Um, I think you're going to want someone, you know, sort of bigger and tougher to go with with Jesse, like she's obviously she's playing ripper footy at the moment. Mm -hmm. They're obviously going to her as a as a number one option. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just think it's again the what we've been talking about with the bombers is just getting those marks, getting that run, and playing basic footy so that you can set up your game. Yep. So you've got Prosparkus going up against what Jamie Lambert, Tiana Smith in around in and around the contest. So it's yep. going to be very important to see who gets their hands on the fun, footy yeah. first mm. with Nance going there as well. Yeah. It's going to be who wins those contested clearances is, is probably going to have the advantage. But yeah. having sat down and been at games for both of these two teams in the first two weeks, I like what I see more out of St Kilda. Yeah. They can have, if it's a weird, windy day, if the conditions are horrendous, I know the Saints can do it. I just haven't seen anything from Essendon that makes me want to go, yeah, I'm pretty pretty confident with what's going on here. 
I just think St Kilda have too much going on at the moment. They're really well coached too. Yeah. Like yeah, it just seems the structure and when they're going forward, just you can't stop them at the moment. I had uh, written down here, Bombers have yet to concede a point in the first quarter, which surprised Wild. me. Mm. But then the Saints have kicked four goals, seven in first quarters and should have had about five goals <laughs> that last should, That should be so that's a bit of a worry. goals. Yeah, so it, that's a weird contrast. Like the Bombers, hopefully they can start. They'll need to start well again because the Saints fire up in the first half. Yeah. And if they can't start well, I think they after the first quarter they could be cooked. Mm. Answer the big question, can the Bombers lift at home? Lift the vibes at Windy Hill. That's what I nah, want. Fix the food truck first. That's cool. <laughs> the chips. Like season the chips and cook them for long enough, cook. please. Oh, were they raw? They were, they were a bit raw. raw they were yeah. eight dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars. No, no, ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten, ten bucks for chips. And it was yeah. a smaller what? serving size than what you get at Marvel. And it was ten dollars. And it wasn't, but they weren't cooked. They weren't seasoned. How do you? How do you, as <laughs> someone who runs a business who serves chips, and knowing how much people at the yeah. footy? Make, like love hot chips. How do you hand over a bucket of chips? And you can see on it that there's no seasoning and they're like a light yellow. There's nothing yeah, crispy about it. Was, it. it was. How do you hand that over? And then, but then, then how do you for ask $10 bucks? for it? That is outrageous. Two out of ten. Yeah, it was a two out of two. ten. Yeah. Two. How out did of they ten. even get? How, how did they that? even get two? Yeah. That's a good point. But, uh, <laughs> he was trying I to be got, nice I for get, the first I one. I got given chips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, we, so you got the $10 chips for free? No, no. I oh, paid $10. Yeah. <laughs> so Imagine I'm, if you said to him, oh, could I get free chips because I'll rate them and post them <laughs> on our And then you just roast the crap out <laughs> it, Yeah, they got two because, well, they, they were still edible. <laughs> oh, so about, they were edible. Not, not by a lot. Okay. I didn't actually finish the... Because uh, you know how sometimes like a soggy chip is good, like if yeah. it's... Being cooked properly first, the and then it gets yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. it's like okay. if you reheat reheat them in the microwave. What? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> not good. It's a, yeah. <laughs> so MCG last week got a seven out of ten. Okay, oh, that's, that's a bit, not bit, bad. A bit of good improved. seasoning. Yeah, I think so, it could have even been more. I I, I couldn't. Couldn't try them out at Moorabbin because I felt if I left the media center, I couldn't get back oh, in. Oh, you were going to get locked out. Because it was a swipe card thing and I didn't have a swipe card. So oh. I didn't test my, and it was raining. Like, oh. Always make friends with the security guards, my friend. There wasn't That's a good. security guard. They hold oh. the key yeah. to your future. <laughs> so Icon Park Saturday, I'm probably going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Once. I think I reckon you'll find a good chip, yeah. Icon Park. 100%. Anyway, St. Kilda are going to beat Essendon by five goals. <laughs> That's Ooh, what I've got. Is, I, wow. I wrote down my big call ages ago. Oh, and, did you? And that, is, that was my, I'm going to get into that later. Okay. But yeah, Saints are going to, I feel like they could smash them. Also, up. check out our them. social medias for hot chip ratings. I'll go by, yeah, 30 points. I, I just feel like. I Fascinating. Just, I just don't like Essendon at the moment and no Bonnie and a few other things going on. Like I said, I would jump off Essendon like that. <laughs> Okay. I've warned you coming into the season. Look, He's had, yeah, the high of Essendon at the start. They're going to go top four, and if they don't, I'll just jump off and say <laughs> I never believed. But I wouldn't mind them proving me wrong, and this is a really close game, and I'd, I'd absolutely love that. Yeah. Uh, I'm tipping the Saints. Oh. <laughs> just go, bam, seven goals. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> By 20 points. Ah, yeah, fair, fair. There we go. That's yeah. Fair. Finish off the weekend. Let's head to Canberra. Monica Oval as, as the GWS the Giants take on the Gold Coast Suns. I couldn't believe this when the stats guy wrote it down. <laughs> GWS have a four and one yeah. record against the Suns. The Suns won by five goals last year. I just couldn't believe these two teams had played each other five times. That seemed absolutely wild to me. Yeah. This is going to be I don't know what to expect from this game. I honestly I don't couldn't know. agree more. I was like I couldn't agree more. I got to this bad, game. <laughs> a GWS. Good, uh, like because it goes back to my uh, Richmond are bad. I know the Bulldogs are terrible. St Kilda are good. I just, stats guy go. Oh well, I'm I'm pretty much the same as you. It is a, it is a tough one. I think whoever wins this game, it's like the changing of the guard. Where Suns are like really good last year. They've made the finals. Then you're going, oh, if the Giants win this, then oh, can they make the finals in the next year or so and things like that. Yeah. And then other Suns just dropping down. And that's what I'm that's what I'm leaning towards. Yeah. I think the Giants. Were lucky last week that the Tigers were inaccurate. That's sort of why they were close. Yeah. But I do like their team. They got O'Dowd. Just yeah. First two games have just been awesome. Like she's been playing for yeah. like 10 years. Yeah. And then you got Goldsworthy Goldsworth, just in yeah. the prime, things like that. Strong tackling team as well, which you which you want in these type of close games. They'll plus 17 in the tackles against the Tigers, which yeah. really surprised me. So I am leaning towards the Giants, I think, but oh, it's such a tricky game because Gold Coast yeah. need to be more accurate in front of goal. What's yes. happened to Gold Coast? Oh, that was so good last year. Yeah. Made the finals. Yeah. Mm. They're relying too much on uh, Charlie Robottom, who, yeah. who had about 50 what million touches last year. The quadruple double? The quadruple yeah, I saw double. that. that I was, was like, cool. all right, Rowie. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, but they're relying too much on it. Like every time they were getting out of the midfield, you're like, you didn't even have to look. You go, oh, that must have been Robottom because yeah. no one else was yeah. doing enough work yeah. in there. 
Um, I feel like I'm also Brady wor- struggled over here. What to decide? Uh, <laughs> I'm worried. So am I. Because I had I had sons in my top four. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no? yeah. Well, you had bombers and year. I had sons. Oh, okay. I think, yeah. Jeez, that looks good for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> we're footy experts. No, because we were trying to be, we were trying to throw one out there. You yeah, we're not that bad of a point to make. Just, well, sons we, made the finals last we year. We yeah. were vibing St Kilda at least. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Feeling we got, that one. And we were vibing Hawthorne as yes. well. Yeah, we can't, can't get it all right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And we were vibing West Coast. You were. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Alex was. Absolutely not. Oh, that's right. Um. I am worried about Gold Coast defense. I'm, mm. I think I'm off them. Okay, all I right. I think, yep. Because if they go it's zero, early, zero and three here, it's just pack it up. Like, you, especially when it's you looked at the start of the season, went, yeah, Gold Coast will be three and zero. Oh. Yeah, like you wouldn't have been shocked if if they were two and one. You'd be like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Zero and three is a distinct possibility here. The Giants, they'll be up and about, knowing that they could have knocked off Richmond if things went their way. Yeah. They kicked 70 points at this ground two weeks ago. Yeah. Mm. They know they can do it. Zara Goldsworth is going, hell yeah, I'm going to kick four. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. I think- <laughs> so the big question is, are GWS up to the Suns level? Yes. Yeah. Last year, they were I've nowhere near I've convinced myself it, in the last two minutes. I think they are. Bryony is a little bit more unsure. I've changed my mind on this about yeah. 10 times. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I got the mustache. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. have the mustache for it. I'll do it. I've got like, you know, like just like an old motorcycle beard. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's like got a plait in it. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's if Gold Coast can kick straight, they can absolutely win this game, but they haven't done that in the first two weeks. And it's not something that just turns around like that. I and agree. Canberra's weird. Weird stuff happens in Canberra. Yeah, we it's said that windy. on the men's show. Yeah. Like yeah. Burley Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's near <laughs> Queen which is the worst place on earth. <laughs> Yeah, just weird stuff. I'll just mention everything that I learned on my grade six excursion. They've got, to you, they've got Questacon. Anyway, um, <laughs> while while you permeate on this, GWS win this by a kick. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going GWS by a goal. I think it's going to be close. But and because of that, I'm going the Suns. Honestly, I don't mind that. The Suns by five. Okay, nice. Make sure to text Spence that in the yeah, right. chat. <laughs> All right, big call for the weekend as we make a big call. I'm going to change one because I'd written something down about St Kilda, but Stats Guy beat me to it. Yes. So go nuts, man. Uh, I'll go first. Yeah, I already said it, but I think Saints shut down the Bombers' final hopes. As soon as yeah, the Bombers lose one, they're cooked. 30 points, I'm saying, the Saints are going to win by. I think they've been the, yeah, one of the most impressive offenses in the comp. They're going to put up a big score, and I don't see the Bombers putting up a big enough score. <laughs> and I am sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, bro. You're going to get, you're gonna get punched off screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Hawks get in Adelaide's faces, but get punched in the face. Yeah. Okay. I, I was going to, I had one about the Hawks as yeah. well. I Like, I know I've picked Crows, but I think there's a possibility that Hawthorne could get up. Ooh. Like, yeah, at least put up a big fight. I think, yeah, that, I think yeah, that's a yeah. big call because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not many people can take it up to Adelaide. Uh, they might scare him a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Keep an eye on Adelaide and Hawthorne. If you're not watching that, yeah. what are you doing? Like, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Keep an eye on that. Also, keep an eye on Melbourne and North Melbourne. Yeah. North Melbourne with the mouth guards in and getting the job done. <laughs> Whatever happens at Coffs Harbour, because one of those teams will go two and one and their finals chances are alive. One and two, I think it's done. Yep. Are the Western Bulldogs going to show us anything on Thursday night? I hope they lift for it's their now fans. Or never it's going to be dogs. a decent crowd. Obviously, opening of the new facilities. I really, really hope that it, at least it's a close game because I know a lot of people going there and they're like, oh, "We just want to see the dogs." We want to see. We want to so see a good game. Keep an eye on that because um, I just want to see a good game. Yeah, Ellie hopefully. Blackburn gets twenty five. Yeah. Ellie Blackburn gets thirty two. Or thirty five. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> <high>. <laughs> Forty three. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for AFL today. W today for well today. Uh, please catch us on Monday where Jess Webster joins the show. Webby's coming on yes. the show, this my mate Webby. So this is great. So we'll have an actual footy expert on that. I'm just knocking both of us. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot wait to have a chat to our Webby. And also Sinead Goody from Port yes. Adelaide is joining the show as well. So that'll come online. So it'll be all three of us chatting with Sinead. So that's going to be an absolute bunch of fun. I have a feeling we're going to really pump up her tyres. Oh, yeah. That oh, that's yeah. We will we'll get around yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'll really get around it. It's going to be an absolute goodie, that's for sure. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Don't say that to her. I'm not. <laughs> Don't. Right. We're going to have to come up with rules before yeah. you talk to her, okay? Okay. okay. No goody uh, pumps. No oh, goody Especially with the too good before. I was like, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's dad jokes coming out right. the wires. But, like you're Sandra, Sal- Sandra Sully with the late news. I'm in mate. my Everyone's mid-30s. Over that Get off my back. <laughs> Shout out to the stats man for coming on board today. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Statsy. Thank you. Statsy. Thanks to Bridie for jumping.
jumping on as well. <laughs> and also shout out to Geraldo behind a camera. Remember to smash a like across the socials to see us doing just some stuff across the social medias throughout the footy season, filling in those footy gaps. Again, it is AFLW Today across Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, AFLW Today, AU on X. YouTube, AFL Today, which is also the same as our podcast platforms. Like, subscribe, give us a rating, leave us a review. A thumbs up. All that good stuff. Do you like the thumbs up? We need the, all the thumbs up. The more, the better. Get around them like I get around a baked good at Welcome to Thornbury, the bakery, as I have Double two mic. microphones coming in here. Anyways, <laughs> that's it. We will catch you later on this week for more AFL Today as well as AFLW Today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. <laughs>